I'll try to show you how to set up G-meter testing of Kapua. It's meant mainly for performance, load testing, stress testing, to really stress the Kapua and see its capabilities. Uh, this is the Kapua interface, uh, user interface console uh, for accessing the functionalities of our uh, user interface, like you can check devices, uh, connections, data, and user management, and so on. Uh, more important, Kapua also provides a REST API, which most of the functionalities of Kapua can be accessed through an API for programmatic uh, access to its functionalities. Most important, the MQTT interface, where Cura devices connect to Kapua, uh, send lifecycle messages, or data messages with a payload like metric data, telemetry data. Like. While testing this, it's important to have a tool that can push this uh, data limits. What, what would be a tool for doing this kind of testing? Of course, uh, JMeter comes to mind when uh, doing this kind of testing. And for this purpose, a custom plugin was built for MQTT tests. There are a couple of different plugins already there, but Kapua has some specifics that needed to be implemented in this plugin. So this test plan, for example, is built of two parts. Uh, one is to simulate the Kura payload, so actual Kura gateway connecting to a Kapua cloud and publishing uh, data. And the other one is access to the Kapua API, where we just count the records that were stored in Kapua uh, database, which is in this case Elasticsearch. So we connect to the Kapua API. That API queries the Elasticsearch and returns the number of records that were published by this simulated Cura device. Now the results are in aggregate report, graph results, and so on, but uh, later on we'll also check this backend listener, which is important when creating the record of the, all the results and publishing the results using Grafana, but this comes later. First, let's just uh, see how, how, how can we stress test the Kapua. One thing that's why, why we used uh, JMeter is because it's really simple to do this. So by simulating Kura, you have this thread group where we specify the number of concurrent Kura devices. So we set here to five Kura devices, which will in ramp up period of one second and loop for 10 times. So this makes like 50 iterations. In five in parallel, each one by 10. We could also specify forever to have a really extensive test and look for things like uh, leaks and similar resource exhaustion scenarios. And this thread group calls this simulate Cura scenario. Now let us check the simulate Cura scenario. Um, there are a couple of defaults that we have to set, like where the actual uh, broker is living, MQTT broker for uh, for receiving the messages, which are we stressing here. The typical scenario in Kapua is to send a birth message where actual device is registered to Kapua. And then after this birth message, we have a loop controller, again, uh, artifact of JMeter, which sends MQTT requests with um, to a certain topic, Kapua JMeter client. This is all parameterized so that uh, different clients can connect. And it sends a really simple matrix, which is a message, matrix, sensor, temperature, and the value. This message is always the same, but could easily be uh, generated programmatically in JMeter. And username and password as a way to connect to a broker. This loop controller says 10 times, so this will execute 10 times. So before we had here 50 times and 
10 times 50 is 500. So altogether it will be like 500 messages sent to Kapua. Of course, after this message sending, we have a uh, disconnect message where uh, Kapua says goodbye and this is kind of end of life cycle of this uh, client. Uh, so this will execute 500 messages and then we have to check if this was successful. So we connect to API host. This is parameterized uh, IP, uh, IP or domain name of the host where the Kapua API is running and the API port. What's important is to log in. These are the four Kapua credentials. Uh, so we specify the URL where we log in and obtain the token. Then we reuse this authorization token ID in a bearer part of authorization. And after that, we are logged in and we can execute requests toward Kapua API. And here we see the URL of messages count, where we count the messages for this account, which published the messages via this Kura simulator. And uh, after that, we use JSON extractor to extract the count value and we validate this count value that it is a certain value. Like here we uh, say, let's say 500 messages shall be received. Uh, let us execute this test. Maybe just a word about uh, the environment where the actual Kapua is running. Uh, we set up Kubernetes uh, cluster with a single node where Kapua's uh, internal database, it runs Kapua's event broker, service event broker, Kapua console and Kapua API. So all these services are run on a separate machine that we are testing. In a real case scenario, we would use a much stronger cluster or maybe use these tests to uh, measure the cluster performance and scale the cluster appropriately to be able to handle a certain traffic. And this JMeter test is run for locally from my machine, but in a later video I will describe how to run it in another Kubernetes cluster, which may run anywhere. Where we'll have a multiple server, single or multiple server JMeter nodes, and the client node, we will collect data in the InfluxDB and publish data over Grafana. But first things first, first we have to run tests locally. So everything is set up, the results from previous tests are cleared, and we can run the test. During the test, we can look at the console. I look at devices, connections. You can see that another client connected here, disconnected because you see live connections. This is all happening during this testing. Because the test is not really extensive, you can also see the graph results of the tests. Results 3 where we see each and every request sent. You can see a birth message, 10 uh, actual data messages and this, uh, disconnect message. And we see that the test is run. The test took 30 seconds, 31 seconds, and we had some error here. <coughs> it was assertion. We said that we expected 500 messages, but actually we got 3000. Uh, that's because I already run this test a couple of times and the actual number of records in database is 3000. It was 2500 before, so expected failure. Uh, but overall, the, the result is correct. You can also check the uh, individual messages sent, sampler, this is the result, the request, response data. So the reason why we created this plugin is uh, we saw here that when we uh, simulate Kura and send the messages, this message is really simple JSON formatted message, uh, but actually Kura uses uh, protobuf to 
convert this message from JSON to protobuf format and send that message. So this is one of the reasons why we used our custom-made uh, MQTT plugin. We can also check these messages here under the data uh, part of UI. And let's query for messages. And we see these messages sent from JMeter client, temperature, value. This is the actual message that was set here. So this is the first part. Now we have JMeter tests. Uh, in the next video, I will show you how to set up this testing environment also in Kubernetes, uh, where Kubernetes nodes, pods will actually run JMeter tests, report this using this backend listener to an InfluxDB database, and then visualize these reports in a Grafana dashboard.